it's all long bend over here. This one might go a little longer. It's a it's a bit of a longer um, reading. It's a bit of a longer. Bit of a long haul a slug. Yeah. Uh, stream manager. Let's see if anybody is popping up in chat here. Bitrate looks bad. Unstable. It's probably when we delete a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I need to save that. Yeah, let's leave that. That's fine. Uh, Eisenheim Altarpiece can go. Netflix can go. There we go. Hi, Sahi. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Hammond. Catherine. I just, I just see Kathy and I see say Kathy. Hey, guys. Sorry, we're running a couple minutes behind. Not too, too much, though. We start a little later anyways, usually. Um, it's 100% Hartman's fault. Yep, definitely. <laughs> Kathy is fine? Really, Catherine? I've called you Kathy, so... Because if we can call you Kathy, then we don't have the, the Catherine Kathy situation. The Catherine Kathy conundrum? Yeah. Um, let's see. Let me actually make sure... Okay, we don't have any doubles today. Uh, let me actually go here. All right. Kath? I like Kath. That's cool. It's like cat with a lisp. Well, we can't call her cat because then we might think she's the one with the cradle. It's true. And then, like, when I... I typically call people cool cat. Oh. Uh, and so... Catherine would just think I'm talking about her the whole time. Uh, well, you might be. I mean, I might be. That's a possibility. Like, Catherine is a cool cat, but there's also other cool cats. That's that's the that's the uh, that's the, the 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 coaching philosophy of Dallas Decathlon is make sure we have a bunch of cool cats. Cool cats. Yeah. All right, let's go and get into to medals to to stickers. Then the Pink Panther should probably be our mascot. It really should be. Can we get? What if I wonder if we can have somebody make a Viking that has like a pink cape or like a pink and pink helmet like rim and stuff. Or since we're doing this 50s, 60s Cold War thing, we just make the Pink Panther a Viking. Ah, okay. All right. That's not bad. I like that too. All right. Oops, sorry. Hang on. These are these are not the medals from April 8th. These are the medals from April 9th. Is that Thursday of last week? 10th is Friday. I no longer know what days are. You're telling me. But the 9th, yes, yes would be Thursday of last Thursday. week. Thursday. Okay. Right. Did you figure out the badge thing in Schoology? I did. I haven't. I haven't implemented it yet because uh, it looks like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, you just you just click the check marks next to their name. Yeah, I just have to line it up with the the score sheet. <clears throat> oh out. yeah, because they're not in the same order. No. All right, medals for April 9th. This is Thursday. Elise in the honors and all the honors again. Perfect scores. Clap 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 clap. Uh, Amber in the honors. Clap, 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 clap. Uh, Ashith. Clap, 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 clap. Uh, Heyman. Clap, clap, clap. Heyman, getting on the board again. Look at that. Two in a row. You missed one question for half the quizzes. I'm sorry. Huda. Clap, 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 clap. Rachel K. I finally added in the, uh, the last initial there. Clap, 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 clap. Uh, Saloni. Clap, 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 clap. Uh, and Umer, clap, 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 clap. Well done. Uh, honors. Uh, Scholastics. We got Afia again. Clap, 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 clap. Afia keeps on keeping on. Well done, Afia. Uh, David. Clap, 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 clap. Emery. Clap, 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 clap. I believe the only person to be on every single one of these. Again, with a still with a perfect score. Uh, Isabella, clap, 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 clap. Thank you, Ashith and Afia. Uh, Tam, also with a perfect score. Clap, 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 clap. Uh, for the varsities, I think we had two perfect scores this day. Leah, clap, 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 clap. Leah actually, I think, has been on every single one as well, now I'm thinking about it. Uh, Surya, clap, 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 clap. Uh, and then Conrad, clap, 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 clap. Thank you, Hammond. Um, 
Also, heads up on categories. Um, so these are based off of currently the last three semesters, um, but eventually we'll include this semester. And of course, with this semester being weird, uh, I don't exactly know how you said the, the decathlon uh, company is going to deal with that. I don't know what they're expecting us to be able to do here. Uh, my, my guess, guess right is now that is... they'll just use two theory. Say again? I said my guess is that they'll just use T3. That would be my guess as well. Uh, yes, those are Thursday's quizzes, correct. Yes. This is accurate. Uh, cause I like we... how you got like called out by your official fake name. No. My Stanley Trio 7. Uh, You're 08. Yeah, I'm 08. There's no 7 around there. Yeah, I know. Yes, the, the yesterdays are coming tomorrow, I think. I think we're going to have to double up on awards someday. Because um, we didn't do we didn't do a video Thursday, which means so yesterday we did Wednesdays. Today we did Thursdays. Um, maybe that means at the end of each week we'll need to do one more, just a quick awards video. Um, just to get caught up? Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, so just a heads up, categories are possible to change, especially you guys who are kind of close either side. I'm guessing they are going to take T3, um, which does impact, I am certain is going to impact some people's categories. Uh, Ashith, we've talked a bit about yours. Right, uh, so some people's categories are going to be impacted, but we don't know what it means yet. Um, so just just heads up on that. Um, also, anybody who has not been been quizzing but is still planning on doing this, please start quizzing. So I know that you're planning on doing this. Uh, D T three equals semester two. Okay, well then that's probably how, what they'll do. But I mean, since it's different for every you know school district throughout the country, um, USAD's going to have to come up with some sort of policy. Um, I would guess either T3 is going to equal semester two, or what I could also see is that they will just say take semester one twice. Um, I think that's possible as well. Regardless, just make sure you all meet standards for T4. Yes, yes. For those of you who do not, um, I don't, I don't think they've necessarily fleshed out what meeting standards meet means at this point, but, um there's the possibility that if you don't meet standards for t4 then um your your entire semester two is in in trouble so please make sure you're doing that please make sure you're doing all your assignments for other for your classes um and that includes uh that includes the the people who are currently technically in decathlon right now uh let's what color do we want to start with let's start with red today all right. Fiery. Yeah, going going a little off the rails here. Uh, an ungrateful man. If you don't meet standards, you get summer remediation. Okay. Um, and obviously, if you guys haven't been paying attention, they have officially said we are staying online for the rest of the uh, term. So just heads up on that. Um, which again, I don't know if it's good or bad for you. Um. Any T3 grades would be... Correct, yes. Any T3 grades would be for the whole semester, but if you don't meet standards, then yes, you're going to have to do summer remediation stuff, which is not great. Which may not actually be in the summer. It might be next year because they haven't set... I don't think they're going to do summer school. Yeah, I would assume they're not. Um, even even online, I don't know what that would look like. Yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, we start here. Uh, at the We're back at the gravestone, at the tombstone store. Uh, he asks Marvin Breed um, if he knew Emily Honecker, and then kind of goes on this this uh, literary element thing or literary term thing. These kind of uh, semicoloned out little phrases about Emily Honecker, um, uh, which is the the mother of Angela Frank and Newt, uh, the wife of Felix, and the woman under the monstrous shaft. Um, <laughs> what would you call that? Is there is there any name for that, or is it just? Um. Is it just uh, compounds or whatever? Yeah, I, I don't know that it's any literary device per, per se. Okay. All right, let's talk about uh, the story of Emily Honecker and Marvin Breed. What? Do, how does Marvin Breed say he knew uh, Emily Honecker? Do, 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 do. He liked her. That's part of it. 
but before that, there's something else he says. They were co-chairman of the class colors committee. Yes. Um, which uh, who else was was were who else was a chairman of the class colors committee, of a different class possibly, probably. Yeah, they went to LM together. Uh, yes, yeah, Sandra is also part of the class colors committee. All right. Um, I don't know if there's any connection there. I think they're just trying to reference, you know. Um, what did Emily's father own? The Ilium Music Store. And music plays a pretty big role in the Honickers, or at least some of the Honickers, right? Um, and so Marvin uh, fell falls so hard for her uh, and that he gives up football and starts playing the violin. Right. Um, and then uh, what happens to kind of break off uh, the two of them? Yes, Heyman influencing Angel's clarinet playing. That's definitely what I was thinking. Uh, what, what, what comes in between um, Emily and Marvin? Asa takes her away. That's right. Asa comes back from MIT uh, for spring vacation uh, and steals away uh, and steals away uh, Emily. What a punk of a big brother! I know, right? Um, how much? Uh, uh, okay, so so he smashes his violin. So a couple questions here. Uh, how much did the violin cost? Um, and what does he smash it on? And what does he do with the smashed violin? It's a $75 violin. That's an expensive violin for the times. Yeah. I uh, smashed it. Must have been a fancy music store. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and supposedly, of course, he bought it from the Ilium Music Store. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the brass knob of the bed, so like, uh, like, um, bed posts, right? Back in the day, could kind of have these these brass uh, uh, railings and stuff, right? Um, and then yeah, he takes it to a florist and uh, gets a gets a gets puts it in a rose box and gives it to Emily, uh, or sends it uh, sends it to Emily via Western Union messenger boy. Uh, sends to Emily uh, via Messenger Boy, Western Union Messenger Boy. What's a Messenger Boy? Is that just a mailman? No, Western Union was the telegraph company. Right. And as telegraphs or telegrams kind of started to fade in importance, they would send them as messenger, like delivery. Think like a UPS person, but they would usually hire young boys to do it. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, I knew it was a telegram uh thing i didn't realize that part though that's the that they transitioned uh so marvin then says if he saw an angel uh what would he see of the angel what would he and what i guess what would he not see or, or make his mouth fall open yeah this today might take a while we're only a paragraph in here <laughs> i might need to pick my spots a little a little better on when i'm asking question uh, the wings, he'd, uh, he'd, uh, his, his mouth would fall open. Uh, but he would see the face, uh, the face wouldn't daunt him because the face of Angela, right, or the face of Emily, excuse me, uh, was like an angel. Right, which is, uh, um, you know, uh, kind of, again, referencing the, the kind of religious the religious uh, aspects of the Honickers, right? Uh, so it goes on saying, you know, everybody's in love with her, right? She could have gotten any man she wanted. Um, and then marries that little Dutch SOB, which, of course, is Felix. Because it was keeping score, that's two times he's been referred to as an SOB. And that, that score is going to go up during this chapter. <laughs> 
Um, and so, yeah, she was engaged. She was engaged to Asa, and Felix snatched her away, which is crazy to think about considering what he looks like and what we know about him, right? Um, His pores might not have been that very large when he was much younger. <laughs> that's true. Um, and so, and then uh, Marvin kind of goes on to pontificate about calling Felix an SOB, right? He says it might be high treason. Uh, it might be uh, ungrateful. It might be ignorant. It might be backward. It might be anti-intellectual to call him an SOB. Right, to say that about him. Um, but, uh, um, and then he kind of lists all the things he knows all about her, about him, probably from Emily. Right, he's harmless. He's gentle. He's dreamy, which again, I don't, I don't know about all that. Um, never heard a fly. Um, uh, didn't care about money and power. Uh, money and power, um, and fancy clothes, or automobiles, and things. Um, yeah, a lot going on there. And he wasn't like the rest of us. Uh, he was better than the rest of us. Um, how he was so innocent, he was practically a Jesus. Except his his father was not God, right? So uh, again, we've we've kind of been talking about this quite a bit. Um, that you know, Felix has been taking on this kind of this religious icon almost in a way, right? About how people talk like him, talk about him, and right here it's the most obvious, right? There he's. I mean, Marvin is literally saying he is a prophet. Right, he is a Jesus of Nazareth. Right, he is on that same level, right? Um, and so, um, yeah, so so here we're kind of seeing it, you know, even more so, right? Um, and so, um, uh, he Marvin doesn't finish his statement. Jonah asks him to kind of keep going on, um, and then he 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 repeats a phrase three times. But what? Right, um, and then he he looks at the cemetery. He looks out the window at the cemetery, uh, and then he murmurs at the gate and the sleets and the Honecker shaft that can be dimly seen. Right, um, and then uh, and then um, what is he? What does he end up questioning in this line about about Felix? Right, what does he say? Like, hey, he's this he's this godlike figure, right? He's this religious icon in a sense, but Yet he did what? <sighs> Got a creaky computer chair. Right, how can he make an atomic bomb, right? So he does all this, right? And then how could he make an atomic bomb? Which I think is like... I think this this question has come up a few times, like how somebody like this guy could have done this, or at least been implied, right? And I, I, I think we kind of understand that Felix Honecker is not a person who cares about people, so he just sees the fact that he can kind of create this amazing thing as like, I'm, I'm going to do it, right? Uh, Mr. Johnson, did you ever watch or read uh, The Watchmen? Uh, like the comic book thing? Yeah. Okay, so there's a there's a character in that Doctor Manhattan, um, who is basically a, a a nuclear project gone wrong, right? Of the Manhattan Project, he kind of becomes this, you know, this godlike figure, and he it, it very much reminds me of his, how he th views things. It's very much similar to how uh, Felix views things, right? Uh, and then he goes on to talk about how he could he couldn't even be bothered to to like pay attention to his wife, right? Couldn't pay attention to Emily. Which basically kills her, according to Marvin. Right, he says she dies of lack of love and understanding. Which, um, 
you know, according to to Austin Bree, that's not what killed her. It's the car crash, right? That that led to her dying during pregnancy. But you know, yeah. But his lack of love and understanding of her made her, you know, or the situation. He didn't care enough to go get the car, and then she had to go get the car. I mean, you could you could see the, the yeah. pain reaction. Yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. Um. So and then uh uh, uh Marvin pontificates on the birth of Felix and what does he say um he thinks about like maybe he was born something right what does he think he might have been born as he was born dead which again to me strikes of Jesus right dead and rose again right that kind of idea um, a zombie, obviously, would be something you would think of, right? Um, and then he goes on to pontificate about the the uh, too many people in pl- high places like this, right? Uh, uh, people in in power essentially uh, are are already dead. Well, it's also a pretty significant oxymoron. What do you mean? A man who's well, living. Put, well, born dead. Yeah. You can't be both. I mean, it's it's. That, like the idea of a jumbo shrimp, you know, it's two things that don't match put together to make a description. So. Yeah, right. That's very true. Like, yeah, and it's, um, you're right an oxymoron, but it's also like, um, you know, I guess just a descriptor in a way, like, or, or like a, a metaphor. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he, Felix gets described in a bunch of weird ways. It's and, true. You know, he's, but um, I wanted to point out, sorry, I wasn't 100% paying attention when we first started, so I missed this when you were talking earlier but the first sentence you've got a syndeton for emily's explanation the okay. wife the mother the woman um, yeah. but also that but what but what but what but how you know that that's uh anaphora again uh the but what yeah okay. that uh repetition of of the words at the beginning of successive clauses mm-hmm. yeah or, or verses or whatever yeah and again that that kind of that that triple that triplicate repetition comes into play once again, mm-hmm. um, um, which again like, yeah, lots of we we talk about that old enough. We gotta I gotta move on here, um, and so it is in the tombstone sales room that he has his first uh, vendit, uh, and what is a vendit? You did did you make that Quizlet by the way? No, I haven't. Okay, that's sorry. All right. No, no, don't don't worry about it. We got plenty of time. Yesterday, I had to try to make contact with the 23 kids I have in my classes that aren't doing their week one work. Ah, very good. You know, not not a significant number. Yeah. Yes, the Vindid is a personal shove towards the Bocos. Right, to Bocononism. Right. Um... Uh, and then into the direction that, um, let's see here, personal shove, yeah, that God knew all about Jonah, that God knows Jonah, uh, and had elaborate plans for him. Right, yeah. Um, um, and then uh, the Vindit is, uh, yeah, we're going to do a quiz of the Boko, Bocononis terms. That is correct. Um, like a cat's cradle glossary. Yeah. Uh, For the cool cats. And the vindit uh, is the ha- occurs under the stone angel, uh, under the mistletoe. Uh, the stone angel uh, under the mistletoe. Uh, the cab driver is still wants it, right? The cab driver wants to buy the the stone angel, which I I got a feeling. Uh, a lot of people come into that tombstone store randomly really want that <laughs> really want that for some reason like it's just like it's almost got like this power to it you know oh there's this a list is the of- nicest thing we could buy let's get it yeah uh, there's a list of terms in the cat's cradle wiki page okay oh all right well that, that makes it easy for uh that makes it easy for you to just kind of copy and paste it over uh, yeah. I might even be able to do that uh, if need be whoa slow down i know i'm usurping (laughs) um so uh so yeah the cab driver wants it he wants the angel for his mother's grave uh 
Uh, the power of God. Uh, yeah. Uh, Nightbot? Yeah, I think Nightbot will get you. It's true. I Nightbot is much better now. You can capitalize things, but I don't think you can send links still. Um, he was crying in front of it, right? He's crying in front of the, uh, uh, in front of the tomb, uh, in front of the, the, the tombstone, right? Um, and then once again, um, <laughs> Marvin calls, uh, calls Felix that Dutch SOB. Uh, and he calls him a modern holy man. Which again, like, just keeps keeps that going right um uh, and then gd a lot of gds here too um if he ever did anything he didn't want to if he didn't get everything he wanted right he, he did what he wanted got what he wanted uh and i think the use of gd also is kind of important or at least like relevant uh again in the kind of biblical sense uh are there three sobs I think we're at four Three. at that point. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I lost count. I found a Quizlet that was already made, and I was trying to copy it over to see if it was what I wanted. Oh, there you go. Uh, and then we talk. he talks about music. He just says the word music, and that's why, why Emily married Felix. Not because he actually practiced music, but because he had uh, the music of the stars uh, in him. Which, again, like a... A holy figure or an alien, right? You know, got that kind of stuff. And then he says, crap. Yeah, the music of the stars, right? Basically, like, um, was Emily a painter? No, she was a, she was a, she was a, she was a musician. What does that even mean? It's like that he is, he is thinking beyond earth, right? He is, he is, his mind is just so big right he he has the music of the stars in his heart and his mind and is just is beyond human in a way so he was like her muse uh yeah i could see that like him as her muse i could see that he's spiritually attuned yeah also true but ugly correct right um yes i think i think that sounds about right um and so um and then we we talk about Frank Honaker all of a sudden. He just he just t shows talks about Frank. Did 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 Jonah ask him about Frank before this? It doesn't seem like I think, it. I think he just brought up the Honakers, and this guy goes off on a yeah tangent. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then he talks about Frank. Uh, and the last time he saw him uh, was coming out of the cemetery gates uh, at the father, father's funeral, right. Um, he hitchhiked immediately after the funeral. Right. Um, the gate reminded Marvin of Frank. You're right. Um, what kind of car came by and what, where, where was the license plate from? There you go. Cemetery gate. Not just a Pontiac, a new Pontiac, a brand new Pontiac. You think the gate reminded him of him because that was the last place he saw him, or because it looks like jail cell bars? <laughs> <laughs> well, he uh, Marvin doesn't think he's in prison, right? Uh, I think there, there's a lot of. Uh, we'll get to it in a second, but I think he he talks about there's a lot of run-ins with issues. But... Yeah. Um, Nobody really knows where he is. Right. Don't uh, they all sort of think he's dead? Yep. So yeah, we're yeah. So so then Jonah kind of pot like po pokes him a little bit, saying, he, "I hear he's wanted by the police, and clearly he's asking this because Marvin clearly knows stuff, right?" Uh, and he he goes on. He's like, "He's not he's not a criminal. He just kind of got caught up into the into this world. Uh, the only thing he's good at is model making, right? Um, and then uh, the only job he ever held on was at Jack's Hobby Shop." Uh, which we will get to here in a little bit. Um, and he talks about selling models, making models, giving people advice on how to make models, right? Um, and then he gets a, 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 he gets a job in a model shop in Sarasota, right, which is in Florida. I actually have a friend who lives in Sarasota. Um, he's, he's part of the, I think he's like the main, he runs the feeder there, I believe. 
Um, with the same job, but didn't keep it. Yeah. Uh, turns out the model shop was what? It was a front for something. What, what was it a front for? Smuggling something. Smuggling what? Cadillacs. Cadillacs to wear. Right, but where do the Cadillacs go? Cuba. Yeah, Cadillacs to Cuba. Uh, on LSTs, which I, uh, again, Miss Johnson, correct me if I'm wrong, this land, sea, transports? Landing ship tank. Really? I was way off. Mechanical pencil. Hello. I don't, welcome. I don't know who you are, but welcome. Um, <laughs> uh, and so Frank gets uh, kind of caught up in all this because he, he works at the front, right? Um, and then he believes that Frank is dead. Right, he believes Frank is dead, um, and he and why does he? What what is the scenario he creates here? Uh, uh, actually, well, I'll just I'll just say it. he says he's um, uh, he just heard too much sticking turrets on the battleship Missouri, um, and uh, with with Duco cement. What is what is is that a person? Or is a brand maybe since it's capitalized? Yeah. Let's look that up. Duco cement. It is a multi-purpose, water-resistant, fast-drying household cement. Dries fast, clear, and tough. What? What is this? He's he's gluing together models. Oh, so you're right. You're right. Okay. Gotta have glue. Um, but oh, it he's, is. He's okay. Sorry. It's a sorry. It's a model of the battleship Missouri. Right. Yes. And what is the battleship uh, Missouri known for? Battleship Missouri. Um, I don't know. Oh, come on. I don't know. I've heard the name. Don't get me wrong. Battleship Missouri is where Japan signed their surrender at the end of World War II. Ah, okay. Still floating in Pearl Harbor. And if you go, allegedly, I haven't been there. If you go on the deck, there's a, a seal in the ground that shows you exactly where MacArthur was sitting to accept their surrender. Okay. There you go. Um, I should have known that. I'm disappointed in myself. I'm a little little upset with you, too, but I did just throw that at you. So. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a world history guy, and so those little details, I just kind of... <laughs> ignore those you know we're just talking about we, we think about so much and WAP. i just you know i don't worry about we're that really, uh, we're really focused on the big picture not the subtle nuance <laughs> you you make that in a joking statement but any one of these kids that have been in my class can tell you that's exactly what i say pretty much <laughs> like anytime there's like a date i'm like ah, i don't care <laughs> uh there's like three the dates only, i'm the like only date in world history that matters is 1066 no, it's not, you, you Europhile, <laughs> you Anglophile. Uh, for those of us keeping track of literary uh, terms, oh, that's that's fair, since it's not on the AP. He doesn't need to know it. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's World War II? I don't even know what happens. Is that the Mongols again? Talking? World War II? Was there one? Was there a first one? I'm confused. I think the first one's oh. got to be the Mongol invasions, right? <laughs> ah, the Mongols. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it says the only job he ever held on to is at Jack's Hobby Shop, selling models, making models, giving people advice on how to make models. Uh, that uh, repetition of words at the end of phrases or clauses is epistrophe. As opposed to apostrophe? Per, well, no, as a, Anap it's really the opposite of anaphora. Anaphora, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Hayment, 1453 and 1258 are correct. 1492, I don't think I need you to know because you already know it. Because you sailed the ocean blue? Uh, that and it's the end of the Reconquista uh, oh. in Spain. Uh, but yeah, I think those, I guess those are the three. It used to be 476, but we don't do that anymore, uh, which is the fall of Rome. 
Um, yeah. All right. So, uh, and then uh, we get on to Newt. Uh, he says he's probably at his sister's in Indianapolis, which you do know. Uh, he got mixed up with the Russian dancer and flunked out of pre-med at Cornell. We know all that. And then he kind of has this rhetorical question. Can you imagine a midget trying to become a doctor? Um, so not too much I'm going to write here on Newt. And then he talks about Angela in the same miserable family. Um, oops. I wrote Angle. Uh, Angela, they talk about. Um, this uh, big, gawky girl over six feet tall. Over six feet tall. Um, and then uh, he pulled, He talks about how she got pulled out of high school as a sophomore to take care of him. Which, um, to me, the thing I thought about here was um, kind of like, uh, almost like nuns, right? Like a convent. Like, like she retreated from society to worship felix right like like nuns do uh with with god right so almost like she's being cloistered yes right um and all she had is the clarinet right uh which also like uh reminds me of like kind of nunneries nun like the the chants right the singing that they did uh, her name is angela right also definitely um uh, the Ilium High School Band, which they, they give a name to, I think, at some point, right? The Ilium Hun well, High 100 or something. Um, and then when she leaves school, right, uh, never gets asked out anymore. Which, of course not. Like, she's not in school. Like, if you if somebody doesn't go to your school, you don't know them, pretty much. Right? Um, and then the old man never gave her money. Um, and, then, uh, and then he talks about how... Uh, Every night, or every so often a night, she'd lock herself in a room, play records, and then play the records on her clarinet, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, played records and then performed them on clarinets, which means she's probably a pretty good clarinetist. Like, if you can just do that. Um... Uh, the miracle, and the miracle of his age, that is, the miracle of this age is that she got a husband... <laughs> that's rough especially the way she's described later so did they say she was bad though i don't know. did somebody say she was bad it might have been i feel like frank might have said that or something i just meant like her physical appearance the way it's described right no surya on the on the chat mm -hmm. saying that somebody might have said she was bad oh <clears throat> um so anyways back to the statue of the angel the statue is not for sale Um, and then, um, and then he talks about nobody else can do that kind of stone cutting anymore. Um, but he says there is, uh, Asa's boy, uh, is a great stone cutter. Uh, in fact, he's so great, he ends up going to Rome, which seems like the epicenter of stone cutting. Um, she would have been better off without one. Um, I feel like based on what we know about Angela, is that she, I'm assuming her relationship with her husband, again, this is in the 60s, but I'm assuming her relationship with her husband is very one-sided, right, where she takes care of her husband, and her husband doesn't necessarily take care of her, which is already what she's used to with Felix, right? So I feel like it's one of those scenarios where Angela probably feels that she needs to be taking care of somebody, you know, because that's all she's done. Um, well, and it... it fits the societal mold yeah absolutely they're already such a atypical family yep she's at least got one thing going for her yeah uh definitely uh and so uh they talk about we've already talked about him uh you know uh asa's son he quit the lab when the atomic bomb dropped he came into the bar right um and he told me he wanted to get his stone cutting work he's a sculptor in rome um and then uh, the cab driver keeps pushing the statue thing. Like, if somebody offered you enough money, you take it. And he'd say he would, but it's a lot of money. Um, and then uh, there's already a name on it. Uh, there's already a name on it on the pedestal, right? Um, and then uh, that's because uh, it was never it was it was commissioned, but it was never paid for uh, because a man. Uh, this German immigrant, uh, this German immigrant uh, was on his way west with his wife, 
Um, uh, his wife dies of smallpox, and so he wants the um, he wants the uh, the uh, the the tombstone for her, right? Which small a, a German immigrant dying of smallpox in the Americas. It seems weird. It's like the opposite, right? Uh, she gave him her ice nine, I think. I thought she had it. She brought it with her, right? She brought it with her to uh, she she brings it with her to the the place we meet her. Yeah, Cape Cod room, right? Um, and so yeah, he he uh, so he orders his angel, um, and he had the cash, and then he gets robbed, uh, which means he doesn't have the cash anymore. Uh, and so all he has left is some land in Indiana, and so he just moves to Indiana without paying for the statue. Which makes you think you would think that you would think that Marvin would want to sell it at some point because you know it's money, but yeah. Um, so he never comes back. Uh, and so he talks about the last name. Um, says a that the last name on it is a screwy last name. And, and that he would have, uh, he figured that they probably are now a Jones or a Black or a Thompson or some sort of, you know, um, more normal name, I guess. And Jonah steps in. Yeah, Hoosiers, there you go. German in Indiana. There you go. I like the, the, Hoosier, the Hoosier connection. Um, uh, and then he says, uh, Jonah says you're wrong about this and why does Jonah say he's wrong that people would have changed their last name ah sir he's already on it uh, so that screwy last name ends up being Jonah's last name did anyone else have a moment of like the John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt song <laughs> no I did not well come on sorry um, I'll, I'll talk about what I thought here in a second um, and so then all of a sudden, uh, we start to see something happen to the room, right? The, the walls and ceilings almost become mouths of tunnels, right? As he sees this, as he sees the name on it, right? Basically, uh, and he says, uh, I think um, the, the unity of, in every second of all time and all wandering mankind, all wandering womankind, all wandering children, right? Um, and then he goes on to say, hey, that's my last name. Right, and so um, the unity of all time and people. I don't. So uh, uh, he's having a vision of his own death. I guess like he's. It, it's like a. It's like an existential kind of crisis thing, maybe. Right. Is Johnson uh, there? Sorry. I got it as kind of maybe not an existential crisis, but as things like. I don't know, a cosmic coincidence. Like, maybe he feels, oh, maybe I am supposed to be on this path or something like that. Because he, he calls this, I think this is his um his, his Vindit, right? Yes, this is definitely, <laughs> him seeing this name is definitely the Vindit, right? Seeing his yeah. name on the on the tombstone. Um, I, yeah. It's like where he feels his, he's found his place in the world or something. The way he describes it, a vision of, of the unity in every second of all time. It's like he's finally clicked in and like, oh my God, this is a right. jam. Right, but like, I, I just don't know what signal that would bring to him. Like, I'm supposed to follow Marvin. I'm supposed to be an Ilium, you know? I, I don't know. Well, we don't, we can't really speculate to that because the way he is presenting it, it's already colored by Bokanonism because yeah. it's a recall as opposed to unfolding action that's true that's very true but the uh, other thing i got from this chapter that i thought was interesting is he's a son or uh, marvin's nephew is the only character that we kind of have seen that's rejected this like worshiping at the altar of science mm -hmm. he doesn't like where after the bomb because we, we met him earlier you know right yes. after the yes. after the bomb went off he goes to the bar gets drunk and quits right uh, and, and then he goes back to um, one of the, I don't know, oldest kind of ability to work with your hands and shaping stone. Yeah. A complete yeah. rejection of modernity. Yeah. And, the basics. and he moves to Rome, which is the center of the Roman Catholic Church, right? Which also is like maybe like 
you know, turn towards religion, turn towards God instead of science kind of thing. Yeah, and he's moved from the new world to the old world. Yeah. He's, he's retreating back in time almost in a way. Um, so he's really the only one we see who kind of does that. Yeah. So, uh, to speculate on the last name of Jonah, um, a lot of the nuclear scientists were defected Germans, um, defected Jews in Germany who moved to the United States and kind of became the nuclear physicists that helped build the atom bomb. Um, who's the guy, who's the main guy, uh, in real life? Do you remember his name? Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer, thank you. Yeah. But I think Oppenheimer was an American the whole time. Oh, I don't he think was? he was a defector. Okay. Um, but, but Honecker to me, like, it, it almost feels, feels like, like, Jonah might almost share the name Honecker with them. Like, he doesn't, right? But it, it feels like he has a similar name to theirs, right? This very unique name, this unique German name. Right, which also I guess Oppenheimer would be a, probably a German name, right? Um, um, I mean, I'm looking at him right now. He was he was born in New York. Okay. Um, uh, German physicists. And they say Honecker is Dutch, a Dutch name. Really? So they they are separating him. Yeah, because he gets called a Dutch sob. Okay. Um, well, you have maybe like Heisenberg, right? Yeah, you're right. He is a he is a Yes, that is true. Um, so yeah, there's a whole article about scientists, refugees in the Manhattan Project. Um, uh, Dieter Gruen, Lily Hornig, um, Albert Einstein, Hans Beth, John von Neumann, Leo Zillard, James Frank, Edward Teller, Rudolf Perls, Klaus Fuchs, uh, Enrico Fermi's wife is Jewish, Joseph Rotblatt. Um, so anyways, I don't know, I'm just... But Heisenberg I'm, never came to America, right? He was always... Was he always over there? I want to say he was, like, the one that got away. <laughs> I'm um, like, I mean, after the war, they, they brought a lot of the Germans over to work on the rocket program with Operation Paperclip. But right. For some reason, I want to say Heisenberg might have... He stayed. stayed in Switzerland or something. Yeah, he stayed. He was part of the Max Planck Institute. Because it was like him and Niels Bohr never left, right? But but then we get Werner von Braun and some of those other guys. Yeah. And, but yeah, I'm just kind of like, I'm just speculating on, you know, we now know Jonah is uh, a German, right? He has a of German Germany, heritage. Yeah, of German descent right after World War Two. for sure. Yeah. Um, I just find it, it's, it's all a little interesting. Um, all right, so we go to the hobby shop uh, where Franklin works, right? All right, we go to uh, Jack's Hobby Shop. I'm gonna try and make this one quicker. We're we're <laughs> we're really taking our time on this one. Um, and then they talked about all the teeny weeny things that Jack presided over: engines, railroad trains, airplanes, boats, houses, lampposts, trees, tanks, rockets, automobiles, porters, conductors, policemen, firemen, mommies, daddies, cats, dogs, chickens, soldiers, ducks, and cows. It's a lot. And then they talk about Jack. Uh, they list kind of his traits. He's cadaverous. Uh, What's a cadaver? Uh, a dead body. I'm not body. asking you, Mr. Hartman. <laughs> Dang it. I just said it. Ah. Uh. Uh, a lot of dead people. Yeah. This guy is uh, apparently a zombie. Yep. <laughs> uh, he's, he's cadaverous. He's serious. He's dirty. And he coughs a lot. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, again, another, like, this is a dead man walking kind of thing. Uh, and then he asked him what kind of boy Frank Honecker was. Um, and then he he goes on to say he adored Frank. Absolutely adored him. The first person to adore Frank that we've really talked about, I believe, right? Nobody else has said they adore him. Um, and then he's, he wants to show him why he adored Frank. And I think it's very ironic that... Jack is the only person in this book that adores Frank because of what Frank tells us he did while working at Jack's Hobby Shop uh, later in the book. Um, and so he takes him down to the date basement. Um, he takes Jonah to the basement, uh, which set up for like a nice murder scene. <laughs> <laughs> Follow um, me down here. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the Zo movie Zodiac. Mm-mm. Uh, you should watch that movie's phenomenal. Uh, but there's a basement scene in that that's, that reminded me of this. Um, 
and Jack lives. Jack lives in the basement, uh, and it shows. Uh, so Jack lives there, um, which maybe begs the question where his wife is, if he has a wife. Um, and then there's a double bed, uh, which is never big enough for two people. <laughs> you know, it's called a double. Uh, a dresser and a hot plate. Uh, a hot plate is like a, like a, it's almost like a microwave kind of scenario. Um, like, but... it, it's kind of, well, it's like a mobile stove. Sure, sort of. yeah, that's probably better. Yeah, it's a mobile stove. Um, oh, there we go. His wife left him a week ago, um, which is interesting. Uh, he turns on the switch, and then the far end of the basement uh, as a blinding light, a, maybe a heavenly light? Um, and we approach the light, and it is sunshine, uh, to a fantastic little country built on plywood, right? Um, a country built on plywood. Right. Um, an island is perfectly rectangular as a township in Kansas. <laughs> now, it's an island, but it's, uh, he, he compares it to a township in Kansas, which is interesting. It's weird. Um... Uh, and then any any restless soul, any soul seeking to find what lays beyond its green boundaries would fall off the edge of the world. Um, I don't. I, I'm not going to write that, but that's interesting, I would say. Um, exquisite in scale, te cunningly textured and tinted. Uh, there's unnecessary for me to squint in order to believe that the nation was real. The hills, the lakes, the rivers, the forests, the towns, and all else that good natives everywhere hold so dear. And everywhere went ran a spaghetti pattern of railroad tracks. I wonder why that's, like, this own sentence. I don't know. Maybe he's just pointing out that it has a, a well-defined infrastructure. Yeah, or like, um, I don't know, like uh, the railroad models. Well, I don't know what you're supposed to get because spaghetti really comes to mind two things. If it's uncooked, it's straight. If it's cooked, it's it can be pretty zigzaggy. I mean, everything here is, you know, where it's squares, it's structured, it's like, a, you know, the Kansas Township thing. But if the, the train tracks are going around in curves, that sets them apart. Yeah. Agricultural yeah. surplus, <laughs> kind of transporting that around. Okay, I can see that. Um. So we got real doorknobs on the on the tiny doors, um, and he says, "And Frank built this whole thing all by himself." Um, uh, and then he goes on to say, uh, "You know, he helped some, but he anything he did was according to plans." He says, "Frank is a genius." Um, he says his kid brother was a midget, which is very interesting and then he says newt i get i'm guessing he's saying newt did the soldier some of the soldering because he's short enough to get underneath right um and then it wasn't easy and it wasn't done overnight either which of course leads to the the adage uh rome wasn't built in a day what's that what, what kind, what's that called that kind of phrase i'm i mean adage proverb proverb I guess it really wouldn't, wouldn't really be a proverb yeah I like that though. Um, he didn't have any real home life. He says that that idiom? that's his real home. Say again, an Maybe idiom. An idiom. Yeah, an idiom. Thank you, thank you, Saria. Yeah. Uh, a world history reference. Yeah, that's right. Um, oh, I I gotta start watching this chat. I feel like I'm being redundant over here because I'm not looking at it. <laughs> no, you're good. Don't worry about it. Um, he talks about there's so many things to see. It's practically like a trip to Europe. Frank would sometimes just stand down here. Um, he'd see things you and I wouldn't see. Uh, he'd tear down a hill that would look as real as any hill, and then it would be the right thing to do because he put a lake there and a trestle over the lake, and it would look ten times as good as it did before. Um, welcome to Twitch chat. <laughs> uh, hi, GYSV. Uh, I don't know who you are either, but nice to meet you. Um, yeah, I'm not going to write all that down. Um, it's not a talent that everybody has. He starts coughing. He says that very passionately. Um, and then he says he could go work for American Flyer, right? Get an engineering degree, uh, an engineering degree, and go work for American Flyer, which was, I believe, the, the, uh, they made those little wagons, right? 
Yeah, those little red wagons. Yeah, the red wagons, the children's red wagons. Oh, hey, you're from the Discord. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. No, it's the it's the general decathlon Discord. Um, what's a trestle, by the way? Is that a bridge? Trestle, railroad trestle. Isn't that the part that keeps them together, the the iron and the wood? Oh, I don't know. I'm, no, I'm asking. I uh, I'm not sure. Um. So, oh, uh, it, no, it's those things under the bridge, those crisscrossy things oh, okay. under the bridge that helped, I guess, distribute the weight. Right, right. Yeah, the support for the bridge, gotcha. Um, somebody, and so he says you go to American Flyer or just someplace big that would support all of his ideas. Um, oh, I just realized I'm recording this without my headphones on, which means you're echoing this whole time, Miss Johnston. Oh, I'm sorry. No, nope, that's my fault. Hang on. Twitch chat, your job is to make sure that this sounds good. Ugh. I blame myself. I don't blame to Twitch chat. All right, let's try this. We're gonna. All right, we're gonna start all over. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, did I put it in correctly? Yeah. All right. Oh, the sound was fine. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just worried that Miss Johnson echoed, but maybe she didn't. Um, That's just how I naturally sound. Yeah. Uh, you have a natural reverberation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then, uh, uh, and so Jonah goes on, it's like, hey, you must have backed him a lot. Uh, but he says he doesn't have any money. He gave him the stuff he could. Um, and then most of the money he ever got, he he got working for, for uh, Jack. Um, but he didn't. This goes back to something we talked about earlier. He didn't drink. He didn't smoke. He didn't go to movies. He didn't go out with girls. He wasn't car crazy, right? So at the bar previously at Cape Cod, at the Cape Cod room, right, they had talked about Frank as being secret agent X9, right, um, and saying, like, he didn't do all these things. But instead, Jack's looking at that as, like, a good thing, right? He, he didn't spend his time uh, doing all those things, right? Um, and then Jonah goes on, tries to kind of egg him on. The country could use a few more of those people. And then uh, the Florida gangsters got him. Uh, that secret agent X-9 finally got him. According, of course, to Jack. Um, and then Jack breaks down. One of those dirty SOBs. Have any idea who it was they killed? Um, and that's kind of the end there. Right. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, that is that chapter. We still got two more to go, though. Man, this is, uh, this is probably the most dense set of chapters we've done, I would say. Um, 36 is Meow. Oh, boy. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> not, yeah. Not, not too wholesome anymore. Um, and so, it's this is almost like an aside, right? This is almost like a random interlude um and so uh during his trip uh to ilium and, and to points beyond he took a two-week christmas uh expedition or, or the whole time he was gone for two weeks i guess uh he let a poet named sherman krebs uh miss johnson can you look that name up and see if there's anything real about him uh, so he rents his new york city apartment for free Nah, it just looks like he's a made-up character. Okay. Although uh, Shmoop has a thing about him. It's called Minor Characters in Cat's Cradle, and they would describe him as a nihilist freeloader. <laughs> yeah, it's accurate. Uh, yeah, the Jonah's second wife had just left him, which, uh, on the grounds, he was too pessimistic for an optimist to live with, which is... Uh... Bad. That's such a bad, like, clearly something else is going on there in that relationship. Um, he's too pessimist for an optimist to live with. Um, but then also, like, he's just leaving, right? He just, I guess maybe she already left him. Um, he is bearded. Uh, Krebs is, Sherman Krebs. He's bearded and platinum blonde. Platinum blonde Jesus. Uh, with a, with spaniel eyes. I know we're not there yet, but there's another character who's described as platinum blonde and has an animal characteristics for their face. 
Who is it? Angela. They call her a platinum blonde with okay. a horse face. That's what I thought. Uh, Jesus, but Elsa. <laughs> um, he was not a close friend. He met him at a cocktail party. Uh, he met him at a cocktail party. Um, uh, where he presented himself as the national chairman of poets and painters for immediate nuclear war. Uh, the national chairman uh, of poets and painters uh, for immediate nuclear war, which I don't know, I don't know, but uh, my guess is the membership of that group is not large. I would also make the argument it might just be one person. Um, he begs for shelter, not necessarily bomb-proof, and he says he has one. Um, and then he returns to his apartment, still twang twanging with the puzzling spiritual in implications of the unclaimed stone angel. Um, his apartment is wrecked by a nihilistic debauch. Now, uh, for the crowd, for the audience, what is nihilism? Somebody explain to me what nihilism is. He's President Snow from the Hunger Games. Is this to lower unemployment rates or something, this position? No, I think it's just, I think he's a nihilist. I think is what they're trying to get across with that position that he made up for himself. Pessimism, but fancy. I think <laughs> life is meaningless. I like pessimism, but fancy. Yeah, life is meaningless. Um, and so because life is meaningless, you presume things like money and property are meaningless, right? Um, and so uh, what did he do? I'm going to finally ask a question again. What did he do before leaving his apartment? I don't know much about nihilism, but it just sounds like it would trace back to Russia. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the Russian people have gone through some pretty, um, some, some eras that might make them quite nihilist. Uh, he killed the cat trash the joint but i want more than that yeah he made 300 dollar calls worth of calls uh he killed the cat uh which would turn me into a john wick sort of man uh he destroyed the avocado tree which also would make me a john wick kind of man i'm going a, a rampage to find that man uh he tore off the tore the door of the medicine cabinet which is the tiny cabinet in the you usually you can sometimes see in people's bathrooms. Uh, and then also one other thing. I don't think I see it. He did write the poem, but before that, not the excrement poem. Avocados. The <laughs> There's one other thing. What were you saying, Miss Johnson? I said it's between the calls and the cat. Yeah, between the calls and the cats. Avocados it's aren't that expensive. Avocado trees? Avocado tree might be expensive. I don't know. Yeah, he set the couch on fire five different places. Which, which to me, uh, screams somebody smoking cigarettes, right? Um, yeah. So he writes the poem. He's got the. We also got the poop poem. <laughs> the poopum. Uh, on the on the yellow linoleum floor, I have a kitchen, but it's not a complete kitchen. I will not be truly gay until I have a disposal. And then there's another message in lipstick that says, no, 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 said chicken licking. I don't know. I don't know what to say here. <laughs> it's messed up. Uh, well, supposedly, right, he had company over if there's lipstick. Right. Uh, so there's, I guess there's, there's, there's the kitchen poem. There is the lipstick poem or the lipstick phrase. And then there is the sign a run a sign hung around the dead cat's neck, which is so bad. Uh, it says meow. Um, he has not seen Krebs since. Uh, since that he was my Karas. Um, and if he was in the Karas. Uh, he served as the Rang Rang. Which just literally sounds like a phone ringing, right? Um, what is a Rang Rang? 
Soko is Surya. Junior Surya. Sophomore Surya, I guess. Surya, stop it. Can anybody tell me? Uh, yes, person who steers people from a line of thinking. Hey, Miss Johnson, what time is it? It is two o seven. Okay. Uh, yeah, he he steers people away from a line of speculation by making it absurd. Right. So basically. He steers Jonah away from nihilism by doing just the most insane stuff ever. Right? Right. And so he, he's kind of talking about he could have gone from the stone angel with his name on it to being a nihilist. Right? But then uh, uh, you, uh, Mr. Krebs came in. Sherman Krebs came in and kind of broke that possible line. Right? Uh, and in particular, the thing that got to him is what he did to his sweet cat. Um, somebody or something did not wish him to be a nihilist. It was Krebs' mission, whether you knew it or not, to disenchant me with that philosophy. Well done, Mr. Krebs. Well done. I agree. Well done, Mr. Krebs. Uh, last chapter here, a modern major general. Does anyone understand the illusion there? No, I do not. Um, there's a Gilbert and Sullivan, uh, operetta. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say it's in Pirates of Penzance, but there's a song called The Modern Major General. And it's, I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard part of it, especially if you, I think it was in, um, uh, what's that Sandra Bullock movie where they're the competing for the pageant? Miss Cogeniality. Yeah, I think one of the girls sings this in there, but it's like, I am the very model of a modern major general. I have the information, animal, vegetable, and mineral. Da -da -da -da. Oh. And anyways, it, it goes. the whole song goes through about how, like, structured and mathematical and logical um, the very modern major general is. That is actually an excellent illusion. Yeah, I would recommend tracking down the song on YouTube and, and playing it. And it is, oh, it is Penzance. Good for me. Look at me knowing things. It's Not on my back. It's what? It's from Pirates of Penzance. Oh, okay. Which in itself is a kind of amusing uh, story. I don't know if it would relate here, but the, the boy gets kidnapped, and he's um, apprenticed to pirates until his 21st birthday. But his his birthday, he was born on February 29th. Okay. That's interesting. There's kind of an, a, a little bit of absurdity there, but I would, I would definitely recommend looking up the... Modern Major General song. It's five minutes long, so we won't get the whole thing here. And it's funny that it's called the model of a modern Major General with Frank. Uh, this looks weird. Yeah. All right, we're not going to do this right now. Uh, but yeah, uh, maybe we'll post it. We'll send it on a reminder or something, maybe. Or post it in uh, Google, Google Drive. Um, and then one Sunday, which ironic uh he found out where the fugitive from justice the model maker the great god jehovah and beals above of bugs and mason jars was the beals above of bugs is so good uh frank is alive beals above's a, a demon right beals above is is the devil right oh is he the the devil himself yeah, yeah i guess i should have mentioned that yeah if you don't know who beals above is that is another name for the devil um and the news is in a special supplement to the New York Sunday Times. Uh, and that supplement is a paid ad for a Banana Republic. Not the company Banana Republic. Um, and on its cover was the profile of the most heartbreakingly beautiful uh, girl I ever hoped to see. Uh, check that. F Somebody could check that, Surya, because I thought Beelzebub was just the name of the devil, but I could be wrong. Um, this is one of the seven princes of hell, and he's known as, wait for it, the Lord of the Flies. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's very good. Since uh, we're hugs. Yep. Uh, so yeah, it's a profile of a woman, of a, of a woman, uh, and a banana republic. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know what a banana republic is, it's reference to the United Fruit Company in... 
What country is this? Is it Nicaragua? El Salvador? Do you know what the actual uh, country is, Miss Johnson? For what? I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the, the original Banana Republic. Not the, not the company, right? It's, say again? Not the company. Right, the country that they were in, though. Um... Oh. It's a. It's definitely a Central American con uh, country. I just do not know uh, which one. Yes, the the woman will be Mo Mona Manzano, um, and then in the picture they have uh, the girl with uh, uh, Chiquita Honduras. Banana. It's Honduras. Yeah. Oh, Henry coined the phrase. That's fun. Henry coined what phrase? Uh, uh Banana Republic. Henry who? Oh, Henry, uh, the author uh, who did the Gifts of the Magi is known for twist endings. Okay. You know a lot about literature. I, I mean, I have a degree in it. It's... That's, that's true. That's fair. It's not like I'm just some hobo off the street. No, it's just, I mean, it's impressive. Uh, like, hey, I have a, I have a, I, I have a major in, in government, but, like, don't ask me about government. <laughs> <laughs> Especially right now. Um, all right, so uh, in the beyond the girl in the picture, we got bulldozers knocking down palm trees, making a broad avenue. Um, and at the end of the avenue were the steel skeletons of three new buildings. Skeletons, right? We got another kind of dead person thing. Uh, and this whole cover, this whole profile, is a profile on the Republic of San Lorenzo. Uh, which, if you recall from the beginning, is the place where Bocanonism is practiced, right? Uh, it's the Republic of San Lorenzo on the move. Uh, a healthy, happy, progressive, freedom-loving, beautiful nation makes itself extremely attractive to American investors and tourists alike. Um, Papa is in his gorilla 70s. Um, oh yeah, we're getting there. Uh, he's in no hurry to read the context. Uh, he fell, he, so he falls in love with the girl on the front. He falls in love with Mona. Which, uh, good for him, I guess. Um, uh, the girl on the cover, uh, who, I, the girl, Mona, well, we'll talk about Mona later, we don't have time. Uh, she was very young and very grave, luminously compassionate and wise, right? Uh, she was brown as chocolate, uh, her hair, uh, was golden, was like golden flax. Right? Uh, her name was Mona Amons Manzano. Oh, somebody did bring up the three name thing. Mona Amons Manzano, which her middle name is almost Mona again. All right, you actually see Mona three times in those names. Mona, 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 Mona. Um, she's the adopted daughter of the dictator of the island. Uh, Open the supplement, looking for more pictures of this sublime mongrel Madonna. Uh, which the Madonna is... That's Mary, right? Fun fact for you, the name Mona means desires or wishes. Okay. Three wishes. Mona, Mona, Mona. Mm -hmm. um, and she's the object of Jonah's desire. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Um, and probably the most famous Mona is an enigmatic creature in the Mona Lisa. Yep. Yeah. Uh, portrait of Papa Manzano inside, uh, who, uh, uh, I think he's, I think he's really, uh, kind of taken aback because he calls him a gorilla, uh, in his seventies. Um, which, uh, yeah. Uh, and then next to Papa's portrait was a picture of a narrow shouldered fox faced. Everybody's an animal at this point. Uh, yeah. fox, fox faced immature young man he wore a snow white military blouse with some sort of jeweled sunburst hanging on it uh, his eyes were close together with circles under them uh, he had apparently told bar barbers all his life to shave the sides and back of his head but leave the top of his hair alone uh, so he's got a pompadour of sorts which is uh, kind of very common as like a, as like a cultural uh, a cultural thing, identity that a lot of like Latin American uh, countries would associate with the United States at this point, right? You kind of see a lot of like almost that greaser look, uh, in in like the fifties and sixties in Latin America. All right, a cube of hair, Marcelled. What does that mean, Marcelled? I wonder. Um, that arose to a, an incredible height. Styled. 
Say again? That's the way it's styled. Style. Um, if it's like like Grease or the Teddy Boys, it's, um, it's probably like curled into, like, I don't know. Let me look it up. Yeah, thank you. I guess it's like, kind of like Danny Zuko in Grease where he has it curled into the middle. Or not Danny Zuko, the blonde one. Yeah. Um, yeah, where it's like curled over. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, while, you're, while you're doing that, uh, Franklin Honecker is the Minister of Science and Progress in the Republic of San Lorenzo at the ripe age of 26. Uh, so, um, clearly he, he kind of got what Frank, or excuse me, what Jack believed he should get, right? Jack believed he was a genius and should, you know, have some sort of power in society. And here it is. He is in charge of an entire country's Ministry of Science and Progress. Um, which, as you're going to see later, is not, it sounds a lot better than it is. Um, but we're finally introduced to the Republic of San Lorenzo. We're introduced to the existence, the the, the fact that Frank is alive, right? Um, we're introduced to a lot of things in this chapter. Uh, this is another kind of turning point, inflection point of the book. Um, but yeah, that's it. Sorry, I kind of sped through those last two chapters because I've got, I've got WAP in like 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, there's a, that's, that's these chapters. Very good group of chapters here. I think, I think again, it's, it's turning other than the meow chapter. The meow chapter is like this little thing over here. Um, <laughs> did you find the Marcel thing, Miss Johnson? Yes. It's a, it's a curling technique. So my guess is that he has like a, a big poof at the, at the front of his hair. That's been like curled back. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. That's Frank Honecker, a very ugly kid with a pompadour. He is fox-faced. He's got a pompadour. Um, uh, Mr. Harvard, is tomorrow's quiz, like, ridiculously specific? I don't know. I didn't write it. I did. Miss Johnson, <laughs> Johnson wrote it. Uh, I'd say for some chapters, yes, because there was very little to work with. Yes. Sometimes it depends. Really, yeah, it really depends on what's in the chapters. Uh, if the chapters have a lot going on. Then it probably won't be that specific. Mr. Vonnegut wrote Meow to remind us how crazy he is. Um, I will say, I feel like doing Meow, the chapter before they introduce Mona, is interesting. Because Mona seems very nihilist. Um, or at least has a lot of those traits and characteristics when we meet her later. Um, uh, in a way, right? She is a Bocononist, but she also very much seems like... Uh, she doesn't care about anything. Um, so, yeah. Um, not a lot to necessarily kind of wrap up here at this point. I think we kind of done a lot of the larger topics up to now. We're kind of just really moving through some narrative here. Um, and kind of getting to get into some main points. Um, Mona equals Krebs, but we don't know. It's possible. Um, I mean, he had his platinum blonde Jesus hair. And uh, uh, golden flax Mona hair. <laughs> so it's possible. All right. Anybody got any questions before we get out of here? Mona is pretty. Yeah, I mean, I got the impression that Sherman Krebs is not ugly. Just a weirdo with the beardo. Yep. Never trust a man with the beard. All right, no questions, it looks like. Uh, thank you guys for checking in. Uh, for our visitors from outside of Dulles Decathlon, welcome. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Uh, if you kill a cat, you're ugly. That's fair. If you kill anything like that. Uh, he's like Thor, but a murderer. See you in nine minutes. Yeah, same, man. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Uh, Surya, take your quizzes. Take your dang quizzes. That goes for anybody else who's in here who hasn't taken all their quizzes. <laughs> all right. That's going to do it. All right, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit, or if you're a senior, I will talk to you tomorrow. You guys have a good one. <laughs>